G'day everyone, Kupali here, and I've got something a little bit different for you today. Rather than a tutorial or something focused on Unity, I'm doing a, a bit of an opinion video, I guess, because, you know, we don't have enough of those on YouTube. Um, just about about a game and a, a company and a, something that they did over the last couple of weeks. And, uh, nothing bad, you know, not, not sort of a, uh, like, let's not throw stones at them kind of thing. This is... I don't know. I found it really interesting from from my perspective as as a hobbyist slash indie developer. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand the logic behind it, and I wanted to talk about it. I wanted wanted to talk about it while the game was out, uh, and I really felt like I wanted to say something. And, I, and I've had a look through all the forums and the discussion forums, you know, and people have sort of asked these questions, but but the answers sort of haven't been satisfactory to me. I don't think the developers are going to see this, but if any of them do, like, I would love to hear from you guys, I'd really, this is something I'd love to discuss with you, I'd, I would love to hear sort of your thoughts uh, internally, not just the ones that sort of, you know, make it to the public, I'd, I'd really like to know what decisions led to the release strategy that they took, and that's what we're going to talk about today, and I'll try to keep this short. Um, I've done a couple of <laughs> takes of this video already, and I tend to I tend to go on a little bit. Um, it's it's a little bit hard, but I'll, I'll do my best. So let's start. What game are we talking about? We're talking about a game called Deck Splash. Uh, it released or when did it release? It was the other week, and uh, it had a bit of an interesting strategy behind it. It released on the second of November, which for me was about what a week and a half ago. Um, and it was released by a company, uh, developer, or developed by and published by a company called Bossa, or Bosa, I'm not 100% sure, sorry guys, uh, Bossa Studios. Now these guys aren't small, they've, as well as Deck Splash, the one they just released, they've also released a couple of other ones that I know at least, uh, in particular I Am Bread and Surgeon Simulator, both, both good games, both quite enjoyable. Um, there's quite a few games listed on their website, uh, a few of them I don't know, but, you know, they, they look pretty well established to me, and they're not a small team. Um, they've got easily like 20 odd 20 maybe 30 odd people that are listed on their website at least and, and I'm sure there's a lot more people involved uh, they're not a small company they're not a small well you know not a small studio at least not not by my standards um, so I just wanted to sort of establish that so before we move on so they've released this game called deck splash and what is it it's uh, if you've ever played any of the old Tony Hawk's pro skaters or any of those pro skating games or or motocross or sports games where you know you're doing tricks for points uh, usually on whatever the latest sort of, well, latest, he says about skating, something that's got a long, long history, but um, they're usually whatever sort of thing is popular at the time. I've seen them done with rollerblading, BMXing, skateboarding, snowboarding, like basically any extreme sport you can think of has got one of these games. And that's cool because they're actually generally pretty good games. Uh, I loved the Tony Hawk games back in the day. I used to play them a few years ago and, and or quite a few years ago now. I think it was longer than I think. But I really enjoyed them. They were good games. Me and my friends got quite good at them as well by our standards. Um, you know, we used to have these long sessions where we'd, we'd build up as many points as we could on free mode and all of that. It was great. I loved those games. I loved Deck Splash. Um, I thought it was a really good game. It was quite well made. It was definitely not what... I would have looked at and gone, oh, that's amateur. It was, it was really, you know, it had a few bugs in the matchmaking and all that. Could have been better, whatever, whatever, you know. It, it sort of, it still had quality. It was still a good game. And I'm annoyed at myself that I didn't get any footage for it, so apologies for not being able to sort of show any of that. I, I didn't really think of it at the time. But uh, you can find some out there, and it, and it did look good, and it played pretty well, and, and like I found that I was, the more I played it, the better I was getting, and, and the progression in it was enjoyable. Um, they had a loot crate system, which, you know, is whatever you want to think about it, is what it was. Uh, the game at the time of release was free, uh, but I believe that the strategy was that if released, it was going to have a price tag attached to it. Um, we'll, we'll get into all that in a second. 
Um, so I don't believe that the crates were gonna have any microtransactions attached to them, I don't know, I, I couldn't sort of see any comments about that, but um, I think they were mostly just there as a progression mechanic more than a, uh, a profit sort of maker, so I think they can be sort of forgiven for the loot crating. Um, the designs on the boards were well done, I thought they, they looked good, you know, the, the models looked good, the wheels, the trucks, all of that, it all looked quite good, uh, the effects, all that, it was, it was a well-made game, and... From what I can tell, it took them a while to make. It took them at least 12 months, according to one of the videos on the store page. Um, and like I said, they're not, they're not a small company. Uh, maybe it might not have been all of them working on it, but I'm sure there would have been more than one person at least that's gone into making this. And uh, I'll sort of explain why I say that in a, in a little bit. So, um... All that said, it was a good game. It was an enjoyable game. Had a few bugs. I'm sure that over time, it would have it, that, that all would have would have improved. So what did they do? What was why are we talking about this game? Well, the release strategy was that for a week it was released on Steam for free uh, amid mediocre fanfare, and the idea was that they wanted 100,000 players to play the game. Now I'm not 100% sure what that criteria was based on. If it was like active or concurrent connections or, or whatever, I I don't think so. I think it was just they were hoping to just have 100,000 downloads of the game. Now, in their minds, that would equate to something that would make the game worthwhile. It would show them that it had the interest they wanted, and in according to what they say, it would have also made the game sustainable. So, that's not a bad reason, that's not a bad goal. I understand that, that's quite admirable. You're thinking of your players. Um, but the idea was that if this game didn't reach the 100,000 player target, then it was never going to release. So a game that multiple people have put over a year of their lives into would just never see the light of day again. It would be removed from the store, etc, etc. And, and I think it already has been. I, I'm not sure if you can still find it. I can see it, but it's in my account, so I don't know. Um, either way, you can't get the game and you can't play it now. Uh, if you run it, it just doesn't connect and you get an error like this. Uh, which is the exact same error you would have gotten when the game was live if you tried to play it offline. And uh, I'll mention that again in a moment. So, it's an interesting strategy. I get it. It's, you want to test your player base, you want to see, you want to see how you're going to go without the big commitment, I guess. I guess. So you've kind of already made that commitment, but, you know, you, I guess you made it as lightly as you could. Um, it just seems a bit strange. If I'd worked on a game for over a year, if I was one of the people on that team, and, and you know, my boss sort of turns around and says, hey guys, we're, we're thinking of not releasing it, what are your thoughts? Uh, I don't think my, my response would be particularly favourable. Um, I don't know what they plan on doing with the material now that they're not releasing it, which is ultimately what happened. I, I think they did well. I don't think they made that 100,000, but I think they did all right. You know, I think there was over 50,000 downloads of the game or, or installs according to their own numbers, um, which is nothing to be scoffed at. Like, if I released something and got 50,000 people playing it or downloading it, I'd be, I'd be really happy with myself, even <laughs> for a free release. Um, you know, that is what it is. So, um... They've yeah they've released this game and and it's been up for a week and they've not hit the hundred thousand players and so now it's gone down so you know obviously that would have been a decision that would have been hard to, very hard to make uh, and I understand that you know if you if you're utilizing any sort of third party tools or, or technologies or resources assets or whatever um, there could be some really big financial commitments that you need to make to run this sort of thing. Uh, so the system that was in the game was very similar, I, I think even drew heavily from something like in Overwatch, where it was all a nice nice sort of uh, invisible matchmaking system. You could start searching for a match, and then you could go back to the main menu, and you could you know browse your available boards and customize everything and, and whatnot, uh, similar to like how you can in Overwatch. You can run a game and then go in and look at your heroes and blah, blah, blah. Um, that, to me, is a design decision though and and this is where I found it interesting so the claims here are that they've done this to ensure that they're not releasing a game that won't have an appropriate lifespan for the kind of player base they want to establish now ignoring the fact that this is a somewhat 
niche or unique game in itself, and, and it's a good game still, I'll say that, but it's not going to appeal to everyone. It never would have, um, and, I, and I think just looking at it straight away, you can tell that. There are going to be people that would look at it and just go, I'm not interested in that in the slightest, and that's okay, because, yeah, they, those games have always been that way. Not everyone liked the Tony Hawk games. I know heaps of people that just hated them, thought they were stupid. Um, so you're making a niche game and expecting it to you know, achieve great heights, but but I don't think that was ever going to happen. Um, I think it would have had a great long-term player base all the same, and I think it still would have grown past what, what you saw, but whatever. Um, you Yeah, and you <laughs> release this game sort of with this number attached to it, and and you've made these design decisions. Like, if you launch the game and it... Before it does anything, before you get to the main menu, the first thing it does is it establishes a connection to the master servers. Um, now, I'm surprised people didn't make more of a fuss of that when it released as they did. Um, you, that used to be a thing that people hated heaps, but I, but I think games like Overwatch have softened us up to it a little bit. It's okay, it's not a bad mechanic when it's done well. I think in, term, in a company like Blizzard, you can afford to do that. Uh, you aren't going to be worrying about the longevity of your game, so a design decision to like that kind of makes sense um i don't get why you do that with deck splash like i get the benefits to the player i get that by connecting straight away you know you're you're sort of streamlining a lot of things the player can browse that menu they can do other things while they're waiting for a game to establish um it feels like an unnecessary thing to have done in deck splash though especially if one of the concerns was the lot the lifetime of the game because there's a free skate mode in the game, and one of the things people have been asking a lot is, why can't we play that? And it's, like I said, I, I tested the game, you cannot connect to it, even when it was live, you could not connect without an internet connection. And that I think a lot of that was because of the decision made to connect at the start of the game. Um, once again, there could have been requirements by the technologies they were using, I don't know. But I still just don't understand why that connection couldn't have been established when you chose to play multiplayer. And so, anyway, you can't play the free skate mode. Uh, not that it was much compared to the multiplayer. This game was definitely multiplayer focused, which is sort of why we're in the position we're in. But it had a free skate mode. It would have been something, you know, it's not the best, but... If you were that concerned about your players and the lifetime of your game, why would you lock that off? I just, I just don't understand that. Uh, and that sort of leads me into another thought, which is, with all the available options out there, why, why is this the decision that they've decided on? Why couldn't the game be updated? I mean, you've one extreme end of the scale, you could have had player-hosted servers, private servers, uh, you could have open-sourced the game if you were really that dedicated. I mean, you can always remove third-party technologies and stuff like that. I mean, and I don't know how heavily it's been built into the game, whatever, but if, like I said, it's not a small team, and if they were, rather than throwing away a year's effort, why not spend another six months to make this something that at least you could market and not be afraid of the lifespan of. That you could turn around, if in six months it doesn't do well, you can turn around and say, all right, well, hey, you know, like, that could have been better. We're going to lose money on it. I don't know. You, It just, it feels like there could have been a better way to do this. And there are other options out there. And a dedicated development team could have made changes if needed. You know, there's, if, the the claim of just saying that, it's being done for the players to ensure a sustainable game just falls a little flat when you consider it just feels like there were decisions made that made that kind of thinking impossible. And and I think the connection at the very start of the game is just the biggest, most obvious one to me. And it feels like maybe there were decisions made early on in the piece that have locked a lot of this stuff off and kind of caused caused this thinking to happen after the fact. So it's sort of a case of, well, we've made this game, you know, it is really good, but we've got these massive restrictions in it in the way the multiplayer works. Like, now we've got all this built and we've put all this in there, how are we going to actually be able to sustain the game? It's like, if this takes off, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I think that's it. I, I think maybe, maybe the game was just never really going to be sustainable. Uh, maybe it would have just been too difficult to make it sustainable. There's, you've got that 100,000 players number, and that's a big number. 
so it feels to me like you had a there were big targets there that needed to be hit and if they couldn't be hit then you couldn't like sustain the game or support it so it sort of makes me wonder what what about that is making it so unsustainable that you require such the, such high numbers and things like that like i know it's not in the millions but but i mean matchmaking servers and things like that at least to my understanding aren't aren't that expensive like it could still be afforded uh and and not not with not while needing 100,000 players um like I, I know a couple of devs personally that that have built these really good games that are on steam uh, obey is one of them uh the developer des is is a great dude um He's actually built his, as far as I know, I think he's actually got his own sort of private server hosting and things like that in it, and a lot of it's been built by himself. Uh, he's got his own master server and things like that, but I know he has plans in place. He's got redundancy plans in place to ensure that if anything happens to this stuff, you know, it's not going to kill the game. And the game will still live on. And, like, once again, I get it. And their their stance on doing it for the players is fantastic, and it's refreshing, and it's wonderful to see in this in this very often turbulent indie scene and, and, and gaming develop or in the gaming circles, you know, as a customer it can be quite frustrating sometimes. So it is really nice to see this and it's nice to know that people at least are, are kind of putting their players first to some extent. But I don't know. It just I'm a little bit disappointed. I liked Deck Splash and, and here's the thing. Alright, you may have avoided disappointing your player base in the long term. But at least we could have gotten some time out of the game. We could have enjoyed it to some extent. Uh, once again, I, I don't know what the financial situation would have been like, but um, I just feel there could have been options, and I, and I feel more could have been done to ensure the lifespan of this game than was done. And I feel that it seems to me that the game doesn't wasn't built to ensure its own lifespan. That you could have built it in a much more clever fashion. There are so many different options out there that could have been implemented and weren't, and and I don't know. I like I said, I'd love to hear from the any any of the people working on this to sort of know what decisions led to this. Um, I'm sure it's not as black and white as it's been made out to be. Uh, that's just sort of that's the nature of customer service. You can't always you can't always explain everything in great detail. People don't always want to hear it. Um, but I would love to hear it. I'd love to know. And and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be critical. I don't mean to be offensive or arrogant, though I'm sure I've done all of those things in great amounts in this video. But I'm just a little bit confused by it all. And i just frustrated. It was a good game, guys. It was a, it was a really good game. And I think it could have still done well. I think you could have still done something good with it. And, and I hope that one day you do. I'd really love to see something like Dex Flash come out. Uh, come out that even in a little bit of a different form um, like it did still need a little bit of work but you know it man if I made that I'd be so proud I'd be so happy with myself even if it was even if I was one of a hundred people making it I'd still be proud of myself because it was it was a good game and I, I thought they did well with it um, and I would have loved to have seen where it went uh, but unfortunately we'll never get the chance and I think myself and a lot of other people that did play it and did enjoy it so you know hey that that 50 odd thousand that did play the game you could probably say that you've disappointed all of them by not releasing it. Um, you know, just just food for thought there. But I'd love to hear what I'd love to hear what anyone thinks. Leave us a comment. Please like and subscribe to these videos. Uh, thanks for listening. I'm sorry I took up so much of your time. And if uh, you are one of the developers on this game, look, real sorry. I didn't mean to offend anyone. Um, would love to hear what you think. But you know, would also really love to play Dex Flash again. Uh, what can I say? Thanks for watching, guys. As always, I'll uh, talk to you next time. See you later.